Hello, I'm Sheila Blanco, Public Information Manager for Savannah Chatham County Public Schools, and we're here today with a community spotlight on a problem that is growing across the country and unfortunately can be seen here locally as well. We want to get information to our parents and other stakeholders about this, what to look out for, and uh, what they can do to get help if they believe it is affecting their family. We are talking about the drug epidemic of fentanyl. I do have three panel members here joining me today to give us some insight on this. We've got Michael Sarhat. He is the CNT director. CNT is the Chatham Savannah Counter Narcotics team. We also have our campus police chief, Terry Enoch. And we also have our director of student affairs, Dr. Quintina Miller Fields. Welcome to you all today. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. We want to start off today for um, people who, who maybe have not heard of this or didn't know it was a problem uh, growing here and across the country um, by asking, first of all, um, what is fentanyl? Fentanyl is a man-made synthetic. Um, it was developed in the early to late 1950s as a, um, as a, a painkiller, as a treatment for terminal can cancer patients. Okay. So it's an opioid, it's a synthetic opioid, man-made, mm -hmm. and it's, it's 50 times more potent than heroin. If it's been around for so long, um, you know, we're hearing a lot of buzz about it being a growing problem nationwide, and, and I want to know why is it, has it become such a thing, such a problem here in the last few years, and, and how big is the problem nationwide, and how big is the problem here locally? Well, nationally, um, we've, seen, we've seen about a 25% increase in overdose deaths since 20, 2018. We hit a milestone of 106,000 individuals died of an overdose death in the U.S. just last year. That's up 25% from 2018. I'd call that an epidemic. What's the increase we're seeing at a local level? So back in 2018, when we lost, um, when we lost, you know, 30 people roughly in, during that year, half of those, the drug tox screens came back had fentanyl in it. Fast forward to 2021, all but one, all but one of those 57 overdose deaths, fentanyl was present in that tox screen, which is telling me. It's fentanyl that's killing our, killing our youth. What typically happens in the community begins to bleed over into our schools. You know, when we look at communities in Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, you know, these are the patterns that uh, develop. And then it started with a certain older group, and eventually uh, it was picked up by uh, some of the young school-age kids, and then we start seeing how it just devastated the communities. And so I think it's important that we put a lot of emphasis on education and awareness, uh, that we get the word out uh, to our community so that we can be in a prevention posture. The fatal dosage is anywhere from three to five milliliters. To put that in, in context, a sweet and low packet that you put in your tea or your coffee is one gram, mm -hmm. okay? There are a thousand milliliters in that one gram. So you take that and put it out on the table, divide that by a thousand, and take, and take five of those little pieces that you divided, and that's a fatal over overdose death. What explains the growing popularity of it now? One, it's price. Mm -hmm. It's extremely inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that here locally, we're at crisis stage, because we're not. So I, I, I believe we're on the front end of this problem for the first time in my career. We can actually do good. We can save lives. And we can do that by getting more information out, educating our, our parents, educating the entire community, educating our students, and, and being proactive. Can you tell us, are you seeing... <laughs> Uh, many problems with it yet 
whether in our schools with the teens themselves or are you hearing about it from, from some of our students with family members involved and they don't know where to turn or what to do? We, we're not seeing the fit and all uh, as of yet, but we're seeing some upticks in use. As the chief has said, maybe it's not fentanyl, but it's other things that our students are being exposed to. And as Mike said, it's in our community. <laughs> well, we know our students are part of the community. And then they bring it back to us, a school community. And it's just not about our high school students that are in that 18-year-old range. But we're thinking about our middle school mm -hmm. and even our elementary babies. Mm -hmm. So parents need to become educated. They need to know what their children are ingesting, what they're eating, what they're doing, where they're going, the persons that they're doing it with. One of the disturbing trends that we are seeing is that every time we go out and we make an arrest or we execute a search warrant, we're finding that our drug dealers are poly drug dealers. We are seizing cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, fentanyl, and marijuana all in the same location from the same drug dealer. So we have to worry about cross-contamination with all those drugs. We have people that don't have any idea what, what they're taking, that it's being laced with fentanyl. The whole community need to wrap their arms and their ideas and their thoughts around this and make sure we are getting the word out about the dangers and impact of this very, very dangerous drug that can lead to fatality. We want to educate our children. We want to educate our families. We want to educate our community so that we all can be in a better place and sustain ourselves with life. It's lethal. And you don't get, you won't get a second chance. Right. And that's why it's important that we try to get ahead and get the message out and we speak to parents. You know, they're going to have to have the hard conversations and they're going to have to be united and become proactive. They see signs of your, of your kids using drugs. You're going to have to sit down and have that conversation. You're going to have to uh, be that detective uh, that goes in and search bags, that's searching their bedrooms, they're looking for things out of the ordinary, uh, they're looking for over-the-counter uh, kinds of things. You're looking for that gateway stuff, uh, things that they camouflage uh, drugs in. You have to look for all of that, those kinds of things. And this is not about blame, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't blame the child. You have to sit down and work with the child to work through this crisis. Because children don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're facing tremendous peer pressure out there. Um, and they want to, be, uh, want to be with their friends. As Dr. Um, Dr. Fields talked about, you need to know uh, where your kids are um, and who they're with and what they're doing mm -hmm. at all times. It, it's critical when something as lethal as fentanyl hits your community you have to be on guard and you have to t have to ask the hard questions and let your kids know that you love them mm -hmm. and this is out of love and they will work with you if they because kids know they they all want to be successful they're looking at this as, as being just having a good time and they don't understand how lethal it is because every you know if they see that my friends are doing it and they're okay then it must be okay for me opioids have been around for centuries Heroin's been around for centuries. What, what the deal breaker is now is this fentanyl. What does a parent look for? What should they keep an eye out for that might be a signal that their child could be using fentanyl or some other drug? They need to be in tune to their child. Sometimes you may have a child who's an introvert, and all of a sudden she be, or he becomes an extrovert or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they become, have depressive moods, and you're wondering, what all of a sudden, they're withdrawing from everybody, withdrawing from everything. My child is just different. My child doesn't want to talk. He or she withdraws, or like I say, they become overly excited, and everything makes them laugh, and they're just, hee hee, ha ha, everything, they're just totally out of character. Mm -hmm. So you have to know your child. But we also understand that this is a very hard conversation for parents to have with their children. Mm -hmm. So what we want our parents to know, in addition to looking for the look fors, there are resources for you. Mm -hmm. If you can't have that conversation with your child, there are resources for you. In the Savannah Chatham County Public School System, every school has at least one guidance counselor, at least one. Every school has 
an assigned school social worker. That's your support system. The Research. teachers on the front line, but that's your support system. Let them know they serve as a liaison between the family and the available community resources so they can bring in other persons who can help them, guide them through that conversation with their child. Let us know what we can do to help you. Because if you get the help that you need, you can help your child, and then we can have a better community. If a child sees their parents struggling with something at home and they, they want to tell somebody, is it that same, same thing? Same opportunity is available for our students. We make a point. We support personnel, counselors, and school social workers of introducing ourselves to our students, introducing ourselves to the community. So a child, please know that we are the trusted adults in your building, and also those school Schools that have our school resource offices in it, another friendly face, someone who's there to help our students. We're not looking to propose, impose consequences. We want to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. We want to make this problem better. We want to be proactive, help our students, and help our families. There are also some academic changes as well. We've seen some patterns of those that may be involved, they've lost focus, that academics are not their primary focus anymore. And we see that, you know, grades are starting to dip. Uh, I would strongly urge our parents to pay attention uh, to their academic progress at school. And, you know, some, you know, sometimes there's challenges because you're having challenges with, with a course. But if you see it, several courses, they seem to be, uh, you know, not engaged as they have been in the past. You know, those are some, some flags that you <laughs> need to uh, start asking questions and and pay attention to some of the behaviors. I think it's it's a combination of different things. There's no one particular thing, but it's it's a combination of different things that you start to look at when you're trying to assess uh, whether or not uh, there may be your kids may be in, involved in. It could be drugs, it could be alcohol, um, and, and other things that they may be doing that's distracting them from their education. And Dr. Fields, I know, said that um, we're not here to, uh, if, a, if a student were to come to a counselor at school or to a campus police officer seeking help, yeah. not there to impose consequences on that if they're coming to you seeking help, but there are consequences to drug possession of any kind, whether in the schoolhouse or out in the community. Can we talk a little bit about how fentanyl uh, is treated legally? Okay, I'll talk first about any drugs and alcohol on our campus is not tolerated. Mm -hmm. We publish an annual code of conduct, and it clearly outlines consequences for having drugs and alcohol on our campuses. Mm -hmm. So students and parents alike need to, know, need to know that they are not allowed to bring any tobacco, alcohol, or drugs on our campus because, yes, consequences will be imposed. It has different... Um types of impact on people. Uh, in some cases, if there's some, um, some mild mental health issues, it, um, it brings out even more. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I've seen cases where kids have just, um, just lost total control, and um, it, it takes a while to recover. Now, there are services there. That, that are out there, there are detox uh, centers, there's help out there, to, but it takes a while to get those chemicals out of your system, especially when there's long-term use. Uh, and once that stuff is in your system, it takes a while, the, the system gets addicted to it, and there's a craving. And I'm, I'm gonna keep talking about awareness and education because you can't fix something if you don't know what you're fixing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't identify something if you don't know what you're looking for. And so uh, we're at a, at a place that we know that this stuff has landed in our community. It's here. Uh, it's prevalent. And we need to take action. And I'm urging everyone uh, to be alert, to pay attention to their kids. Um, our job is to make sure, as caregivers, as parents, as guardians, is to make sure that we take care of them because they don't know what they don't know. It's just something that makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. And with this fentanyl, you only get one, you don't get a second chance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've deployed uh, Narcans uh, in all of our schools and our SR, SROs and nurses. But fentanyl, you may, we may not get there in time. Do you have any final thoughts, something that we didn't talk about that you feel is important? The school is here to educate, and that's educating the whole child. 
<laughs> want to work with them academically, of course, because our end goal is to have them graduate, as we aforementioned, and help them be uh, successful citizens in our community. But it's a lot that happens between pre-K and 12th grade. Mm -hmm. And we want them to get from that point to the next. We want families to realize that homes are the first schools and parents are the first teachers. So there's a lot of accountability that's placed on homes and that's placed on parents. And then they will come to us, the children, and we would hopefully reinforce some of those things that they're um, learning at home. So we want everyone to know that it's a partnership, the home, the school, and the community working together to help, to help ensure our young people are successful. There are resources that are available. Don't hesitate to reach out. I think that not only does, are, are there excellent resources that, that the school system and the county provide to everybody. As a parent, I mean, all you got to do is go online. You know, there are tons of resources online if you have questions, if you have concerns. And as a parent, you have to trust but verify. I can tell you right now, if you want to know what your kid's doing, get a hold of that phone. If you're paying for it, you should have access to it. It's just important that you know and verify who your kids are hanging with. Chief, did you have any final thoughts? We can't enforce our way out of this. Um, other communities have not been successful at doing it. We just can't lock our way up, lock everybody up. Uh, what we can do is work together as a community. If you see someone that's in need of help, we have a see something, say something mm -hmm. initiative. Let us know. We have Sandy Hook Promise. In all of our schools, those initiatives are there. Sandy Hook Promise has a 24-hour crisis hotline. If your kid doesn't want to talk to an adult and wants to talk to someone else, there's someone available 24-7 for them to talk to. Training and awareness uh, is going on throughout the school district. We're training all of our police officers, all of our, um, our school safety officers, and we're even training our crossing guards. We're training our nurses, we're training our school officials and teachers on what to look for. So when you see signs, when you see flags, that we can take a proactive uh, approach to get the kids the help that they need, to contact the families, to work with the families, to get them the resources that they need in order to address this, these issues. There's a great program that's in all of our high schools now. It's called SAD. It's Students Against Destructive Decisions. And students from all, all kinds, all walks, uh, are a part of this organization. And it's a positive organization where, and it's ran by students, to be there to, as a support. Mm -hmm. Students support each other as they go through a crisis, as they go through helping them make better decisions about life. It's a national uh, program. It's been around uh, for over 20-something years, is proven itself to be successful. We've implemented these programs, uh, SAD, in all of our high schools. It's a way to socialize around positive people, uh, to get the kind of, um, you know, peer support that you need to be successful, and I, and I urge everyone to do that. Now, we're going to continue to do our proactive measures like random administrative inspections uh, that are conducted by administrators throughout uh, our district uh, mm -hmm. is a way to uh, identify drugs. We do safe school searches. We have our canine dogs that uh, that does searches throughout. Uh, they don't search people, but they do search um, things inside of schools to make sure that um, our kids are not bringing um, contraband or drugs and things of that nature in. So we're going to continue to be as proactive as we possibly can, but we can't do it without you. You know, we have a little small community of, of over 37,000 uh, big, small, wide, tall scholars that come in and out of our buildings every day. We love each and every one of them. We need your help to help us keep them safe and ensure that they are successful in life. Thank you very, very much for joining us today, helping us to get that information out to everyone. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much.